Conducting a thoughtful, fair, and useful evaluation of the superintendent is both important and challenging. In this series of five short videos, school committee members and superintendents from five districts share their experiences as they developed, implemented, and now continue to refine the superintendent evaluation process. Depending on the committee, I think it's very committee specific how they decide to organize around the evaluation process. Particularly larger committees, I think, will take advantage of a subcommittee that works with the superintendent. Our uh, evaluation subcommittee is composed currently of the vice chair of the school committee and two other members who apply to the chair at the beginning of the process um, saying what they want their assignments to be for the upcoming year. We use a uh, subcommittee of, the, of the, the full committee and it's chaired um, by the chair of the school committee. I work with the uh, subcommittee to organize the process uh, which the, we then bring to the larger committee. the changes that I've seen in the evaluation process since the uh, implementation of the new model for evaluation is a change in the calendar for evaluation. A lot of school committees used to think about it in terms of elections. I think many more school committees now are thinking of it in terms of the work of the district. They're thinking about what are the goals uh, over the summer or in the early fall. Uh, and they're doing the evaluation model at the end of their doing the evaluation at the end of the school year rather than in March or April um, or November um, to align with an election process. We meet three times over the course of the year. The first meeting is usually held in September or October. That's the self-reflection and goal setting meeting. Then there's a second meeting. It's usually later on in um, the late winter or early spring. It's a mid-cycle check-in. Uh, the focus of that is just on what progress is being made on the goals that have been approved. And then there's a final meeting in June where we um, determine ratings uh, based on the, the goals that have been approved, also taking into account the other standards for superintendent evaluation. In June, I have my retreat with my team. It includes teachers, administrators, it's about 40 odd people. Um, we review the year, we think about the strategy overview, overview update, what did we do well, what do we need to concentrate on, what can we veer from and maybe add something that we've identified as a need. Um, and then um, in September, the school committee has a retreat, they check their own goals, uh, maybe revise those, then in October I give them my goals. February or so, we have the formative. Correct. We do the summative May or June, depending on what happened. And by the time they compile the report and get it to me to put into EPIMS, sometimes we're right up against that August 1 date. At that point, things have kicked off in the year, and if there was a course correction needed in the goal setting, it'd be a real challenge, and I think it could lead to some potential conflict of, well, how can we start this goal in October because we've already kicked off the year and a number of professional development activities and leadership moments have happened. Be a process during the course of the year where the superintendent and the school committee are sort of sharing with one another. So we want to make sure that there's timely information shared um, that allows for changes to be taking place during the course of the year. Keep the evaluation um, an ongoing conversation during the course of the year, not something they think about at the beginning, put away and not think about again until it's time to write that composite evaluation. It shouldn't just be this one point in time where we suddenly learn about what the superintendent has been up to, what the district has been doing. One of the habits we had to build that school committee originally was not comfortable with was making individual meetings with me to give me feedback. You develop a, an appreciation, I would say, for what the other person is thinking and why. Why did you do that? I'm not sure I understand the importance of that. You seem to think that's very important. I don't think it was very important that you did that, and vice versa. So when you come to common understanding and speak a common language, you can evaluate more accurately and appropriately. One of the things that we do periodically is, as part of this whole evaluation process, is to set up workshops. 
before a school committee meeting during the summer we may have a six to seven our, our meetings are at seven o'clock but from six to seven we'll have a workshop and we'll talk about this in fact we just did the other night uh, and uh, specifically homing in on the evaluation process so that we're all talking about it together we're at we're on the same page we understand the process there are we can answer and address any and all questions about the process. We're learning together about some of the best practices and um, getting guidance uh, as the process unfolds. I think one of the things that is most important that I think about things we've done that have improved our process for superintendent evaluation and really our committee functioning overall is uh, allowing ourselves the space to breathe, to think about what we're doing and to improve what we're doing over time. We hope you will use these videos and the accompanying examples, tips, and tools on the department's website to learn more about what school committees and superintendents are doing and learning as they partner to ensure a fair, thoughtful, and useful superintendent evaluation process.